In this video, we're going to look at how to find broken images in your Joomla articles and extensions and uh, why it's important to fix those. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday live stream number 72. It's December 31st, 2018. So if you're watching this live or soon on the replay, Happy New Year to you. I hope that uh, 2019 is a prosperous and a blessed year for you. So let's turn our attention to the screen here. And then later on, I've got a bunch of announcements to make and news and we'll catch up in the chat. Um, just want to remind you that this being the last day of the month, we're going to have a bunch of, uh, we're going to have a giveaway tonight on the monthly giveaway. So head on over to basicjoomla.com forward slash giveaways and get in and enter on that. And then of course, a new contest will be starting tomorrow, January 1st, 2019. Hello, Vinny. Hello, Chuck. Um, all right. So... Let's talk about broken images in our Joomla sites. Uh, I've been doing some work on the basicjoomla.com site and playing around with the new template and I didn't have my logo or f uh, favorite icon or favicon uploaded and I noticed the site was really dragging. And so I looked into it and realized that I had those broken images. Uh, basically what happens, if you have a broken image on your Joomla site, whether in an article or in an extension, uh, or somewhere in the template, when your when your viewers call for the web page, uh, it creates a drag, a delay in order to before um, because there's no image to be seen. Uh, and so the the way that I check that out, first of all, let's go into content and articles because I need to break um, I need to break an article first. The one I'm going to break is uh, this one on, um, let's see, go to home, and then we'll just break this Hey There Joomla Fans article all there by itself right now. So there's Hey, we'll search for Hey There Joomla Fans in the title, we'll go into there. And basically what I'm going to do, let's click on the link actually, so that works. I will go into the code view and I'm just going to take out one letter of that image in the code view, and I'm going to save that. So now when I refresh the page here, this image here is going to break. And what I'm going to do is, and you'll see right there, it's putting in the alt text, which is a good thing to have in your images because that can help with search engine optimization. I'm going to take this URL and there's lots of these out here and we've talked about them before and we'll probably mention them in the chat afterwards for the ones that you guys like to use. I just went to gtmetrics.com. You put in your URL and it'll analyze the performance of your, um, of your web page. Uh, as it does that, we we'll just have to wait a couple of seconds here. As uh, what we're going to do is once it finds the results, we're going to scroll down through what is called the waterfall. It just shows the order that things are, are called for and, and when they're served up. And uh, so here we are, page speed 90%. Uh, we we'll click on the waterfall tab here and here we see all kinds of different things. It's really interesting to see all that's happening in your pages. This is a great tool to look for other places where maybe uh, your site is slow, for instance, I had something that was connecting to Facebook on this site that really doesn't get used. I don't need it anymore. I took it off and it sped the page up because it was just less script waiting for it. But what we're going to do is kind of scroll down here. We see this 200, uh, sorry. We see where it says 200. I can uh, zoom in on this a bit. Where it says 200, that's okay. So everything got called. It's calling for the page. It's calling, uh, this is the media box CSS. Yeah, called that, it found it. Just scroll down through the results here and you will, as soon as you see something other than 200, pay attention to it. And look, here's a 301. Uh, it's interesting why this is a 301 because it should be a 404 error because it's not there, but maybe it's some setting that I've got that I've forgotten about. But here is that logo, uh, here's that graphic that I changed the name to. Hey, Rick. Uh, and it says 301 basically, which is moved. Now we can explode this and see what the rate, uh, see which one it is. Um, doesn't really tell us much more. Um, but basically, t check this out here. You have this uh, time where it's called for and then this purple time, 
which is waiting. And notice it's a very, very long wait compared to the purple in the other images. And that is because it is a broken image. Hello, Rick. Hello, Johan. Uh, so basically, uh, even though this is being called for all at the same time, we see these all in a row, this is a really long time coming up. And that's just going to slow down the serving, the full loading of the page. And so you can continue to go down through this tool or whatever tool that you use. Look for other broken images. And what we're going to do is then just fix this broken image. Let me put the O back in there, not a zero, put an O. Save and close that. The cache should clean automatically because I'm using cache cleaner from regular labs. And uh, we'll scroll up to the top here and we'll retest. Now, this is probably gonna take a little bit longer because we saw a cached version from the other preview. Uh, but once we get into there and get those results, we will see that the waiting time for that one broken image is no longer there. Really not much for one image that's broken, but suppose you have a bunch like I had the other day, three broken images, it can really, really lengthen things. So here's the results. We'll go to the waterfall we will scroll back down. We see everything is all 200, so that's great. In fact, where's that? Uh, there's the one right here. Tim Davis, he's a Joomla fan too. And now we totally cut that waiting time right down. Um, and so basically, uh, you know, you don't want to have uh, broken images on your site anyways because they uh, it cause it to not appear as it should. Uh, as we saw with the alt text, it gets kind of, it shows up in with your text, especially if you're wrapping, it can be confusing. And it's just not the look that uh, that we're going for. Uh, so you should, uh, but so check out your site, check out your pages, check out your templates, especially, because if you have a missing image on one of your templates, it's on every single page on your site. But check those things out, fix them up, and that's a, pro a good thing to do to maintain your site. You'll have a faster page uh, load, you'll do better in search engine optimization, and it's a better all around experience for the people that are visiting your site. So that's it for the end of 200 and, uh, 218. Wow, that's a, that would make this Maintenance Money live stream, I don't know, 20,000 or something. Who knows how many weeks since 219, uh, 218. 2018. Thanks for your support of this channel. We're going to keep the stream going here and chat and visit and catch up as we usually do. But if you're leaving at this point, I want to thank you for your support of this channel. Um, I'm going to post some stats about the uh, 2018, what it was like on the channel for visits and all kinds of things like that. Uh, make sure you enter the last contest of the year. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Ring the bell for notifications and why not to give this video a like. So, Enjoy your Joomla sites, and God bless. And uh, uh, Johan says that waterfall is also included in Chrome Developer. Uh, I don't know, but why don't we check that out? Uh, first of all, let me get the link to the Zoom call here. And I have very carefully made sure that I am in the Zoom call. So hop on and uh and uh, we'll continue talking about this and other things about the end of our year and i also want to let you know a few things that we have planned especially for the next uh watch me work live streams which are now on wednesday january the 2nd we're going to be looking doing a collab just c discussing and sharing our plans for our businesses or our joomla sites for the coming year. And one of the things that I've been focusing on in pre preparation for that is distractions that I can get rid of and also um, uh, also ways to generate new leads for my business. So those are two things I've kind of focused on. There's also some probably some personal things that I'll share too as far as perspective. And, uh, and I think that's important too because the, one of the things that holds us back from uh, some of the success that we're looking for isn't just the circumstances of how we have our business set up, but it's also just sort of the way that we're thinking about life and view ourselves. And uh, it's always good just to uh, tune up ourselves in that way. Anyways, all right, there's the Zoom call. I have my speaker up and um, Let's go control uh, zero to make this screen here the regular size. 
And let's go back to um, on my remote here and just trying to get a chat off of here that popped up there. Okay, let's go back to the full screen with things down in the side there. All right, so Johan says uh, in Chrome Explorer, then when we go there, Chrome Explorer is F12 to bring up on your page. And if you know where how to get to that waterfall and uh, on Chrome Explorer, just let me know. Uh, in fact, let me just turn off my camera here for a second and you can see the full page. For those of you that have maybe never used the Chrome Element Explorer, you use F12 and then you can actually go and see different CSS things that are happening in your site. You can click this little square button that's over here, very right at the edge of the screen. And then you can go and view an element. So here's that broken image at this time. We haven't replaced the page and we can see the HTML of the page here. And we can also see the CSS that is affecting it here. Uh, no, Johan, I don't think I, uh, oh yes, I think I did, Johan, get your email about that. Um, I am behind on my emails, which is, um, I need to do a big, I, I, I need to do a big catch up on a few people that have contacted me, because especially for scheduling for Watch Me Work live streams. So uh, I do think that I, I do think that I got that. It was probably be maybe about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago that you sent that. Um, because I remember when you, uh, remember getting an email saying about the extension of that, oh, those would be good to contact people, the programmers or developers of it for Watch Me Work live stream. So, uh, all right, in the network tab, you say, da, 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 da. okay, network. All right. Uh, perform request control R to record the reload. Okay, let's go control R. And we'll reload the page. Oh, so it's a recorder in real time. So it doesn't do it every time. And here it is. Waterfall. 67, zero, uh, let's see, it's not happening here. Load time, 4.71 seconds. Um, oh, oh, here we go. Up here on this row, let me zoom that in. Control plus. All right, it records it, but you need to select what you want to see. So if we want to see images, we just click images. And okay, that's cool. In fact, now I need to make this taller. And here are all the images get caught. Well, this is handy to see. And there's the image size. It was pulled from disk cache, cool. Uh, and that, so that was cached here on my computer, obviously. Oh, this is really neat. I didn't, uh, there's so much that I don't use in um, Element Explorer. Uh, here's um, um, things pulled from memory. Excellent. And uh, Hootlet Share PNG. Here's a couple of photos here. Yep. And Bubble Drop, that has to do with... Um, uh, uh, something in the templates that I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on switching the site over to a um, Asteroid Framework uh, template. And so that's, I think that's where those bubble drops are. But uh, all right, cool. And if you want to see everything, you just click all. And then we have the, we have the um, waterfall up here. It shows down the right hand side here. So uh, it's not changing. There we go. Oh, here it is. Yeah, showing style sheet. So it calls the document here, which is five kilobytes. And uh, the time is 708 milliseconds, just over half a second for that to be served up. And then here are the different elements down here as they come in. Now here, now notice here because um, this is a really good point. If you have images in your templates, uh, they're going to be called from the cache on people's sites. So once their first page load is there, it will load even faster because zero milliseconds for all these things that are being loaded from memory from the cache. 
And as we go down, there's uh, subscribe embed. Uh, that is probably being served up for as a platform. It's a JavaScript. I think this is the code on that page where here. Let's see here where the um, for subscribing to the YouTube channels. Very cool. So there's another way to check out. Uh, and a, probably an even better way than using GT metrics because you can just select images and check the status of them all. Very, very cool. Hey, thanks for that tip, Johan. Um, for those that you maybe just come on, there's the link to the Zoom call. Vinny, if you're in there, and it sounds like I can't hear you, I tested everything before, so unless I've missed something, hate to leave you alone in there. All right. Uh, let's go back to this screen. That's that's really cool to see. Uh, control uh, zero. Let's turn that, close that. There we go. All right, so... Um, Oh, I hear the doorbell. So somebody has come in. Not just anybody. I hear the doorbell. Oh. So somebody has come in. There you go. It sounds like I've come in twice. Hello, Vinny. Hello. I guess you that's... look like you, were, you sounded like you were lonely in here. Well, it is kind of lonely in here. Coming up with things. Well, I mean, you know how it is that you feel. It's that whole feeling from high school when I talked to girls. You just felt kind of dumb because you realized you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> well, then you do what I do. You don't talk to girls. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't really talk to girls since I got married either. I mean, not in that same way anyways. Um, hey, let me just turn this camera back on here. No, so it's no, I like I like that everyone's lurking, but uh, you know, you want to avoid dead air on this. Of um, course. You I, know me, I'm an old radio guy. Yes, an old radio guy. You're not as old as you. So what are your New Year's Eve plans? Hey, everybody, put your New Year's Eve plans in chat, too, if you want to uh, share them. I am finishing the relaunch of iloveoldtimeradio.com. I've done a whole bunch of changes to it. Um, completely redid the back end of stuff um, to make my workflow easier. So, And uh, you... Um... You are you're still working on that on that deal with that other site. Are you going with them with the company that wanted to run your shows? Or I, I'm not sure yet. Um, my girlfriend's podcast is is going on there first. Hers launches on January 6th. Okay, I got all her stuff moved over onto their network. They use a uh, platform called Megaphone, which I actually really like, and I've. I'm um, considering moving my hosting of the podcast itself to Megaphone um, because I like a lot of the analytics. They have live analytics, um, so you can actually see who's who's watching or what who's downloading one of your episodes while they're doing it. Cool, and, and see where they, where they're located too. So that's kind of fun. And when you say hosting, uh, you mean the like the 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 audio files. The uh, yeah, the actual audio files cuz right now I do everything. I don't use any services. I do everything myself. Um, so I have a, a free program, a free PHP program called Podcast Generator and it actually generates the uh, XML uh, file for the the RSS feed that um, iTunes and and places like that get get uh, the uh, all the the video uh, all the files, but I host all the files. Yeah, and I'd rather not host it on the same server as the website's on, uh, just because that can cause problems. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Chuck says he's going to club for a New Year's Eve party. Well, I'm too old to go to clubs. You are. I am. Not to mention, I don't drink, so going to clubs seems rather pointless. Yeah, I don't, I don't drink either because uh, the stuff that's in my head when I'm sober, should, a lot of it I don't let out. 
So yeah, uh, I don't need to not have a filter. <laughs> All right. I've heard some of the stuff that goes on in your head too. When you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I've had places at weddings or whatever like that, or people. Uh, you know, originally I just never liked the taste of it. And also, when I was a kid, I was a bit of a loner. So when uh, I may have mentioned this before, but when I had friends that would push me into doing stuff, I it just I just thought that was so stupid. So I wouldn't. If anybody was trying to pressure me into doing things, I just I just had no interest in that. And so consequently, uh, uh, that and uh, by the grace of God, I did not uh, end up into that when I was a kid. And um, and so that's uh, that's that's good. But yeah, so now if I'm somewhere and people offer me a drink, and I think, well, it'd be okay to you know, I'll I'll have like. We had champagne on a cruise that was really tasty um but uh but if i but if i'm gonna drive or anything i just think no now is not the time to experiment to see where my limits are so no no i will tell you the closest that i ever came to being drunk was uh we had friends that lived around the corner uh from us and uh he invited us oh they invited us over for some snacks and we hadn't had supper here and he had made some home he had homemade wine that he'd made so we thought okay well it's just like you know it's like wedding i'll drink it just be polite well he gives me this like uh, goblet that is like like huge and a, a healthy portion so i'm like oh boy it's gonna take me a long time to uh sit my way through this to be polite anyways We'd been there going for a long, talking for a long time. And I, I kind of wanted to wrap things up and get going home. And I still had like half of this glass. So I thought, well, I will, uh, I will dispense of it. I'll just, you know, so when they're not looking, I start taking big swigs and glugs and stuff just to get rid of it. So I could say no thanks. Anyways, into the visit, I'm sitting there. I thought, you know, I feel kind of funny. And I thought, I, I don't, and I went, oh no. And I hadn't eaten anything because they pretty much had seafood. There's crab puffs and that. I'm not a big seafood eater. And then it dawned on me. I've had this. I've been drinking this huge glass of wine, homemade wine. I haven't eaten anything. Didn't have any supper. Empty stomach. I thought, oh boy. So I started popping crab puffs like crazy, which uh, you know, not liking seafood, I might as well just be swallowing sponges to soak stuff up. And uh, anyways, uh, so we walked home just around the corner and uh, my wife and I leaned on each other and uh, and we just went to bed when we got home. And I just remember lying there thinking, why does why do people do this to themselves? This does not feel good at all. So, yeah, exactly. So anyways, that was uh, that was it. Uh, Johan says. Um, um, user overview Formula One and do some image editing in Affinity Photo, the best Photoshop alternative. Yeah, um, I I haven't played with Affinity Photo. I've been playing around with their beta um, page designer. That's like a, uh, that's like InDesign. Uh, Affinity is actually uh, come from Serif. Serif, uh, they 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 had uh, Serif Page Plus serif um um they had their web program actually my girlfriend used their web program a lot and actually built websites for clients and stuff like that based off their web program and then they decided oh we're not going to do this anymore and then they became affinity and they created this photo um editing software which i have not played around with considering i have a subscription to adobe cc so uh, I've got it up on the screen here. Um, yeah, I use Photoshop Pro, um, but I, graphics is such a weak part for me. Um, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, so Johan, do you use this? Serif. I, I'm tempted to. No, it's Serif. Serif. Oh, is it Serif? It is Serif. I don't know. Yeah. So I've, I've always said Sans Serif. How do you pronounce uh, 
Uh, Johan says, uh, pay once, use always $50 for all your computers. All right, here, I brought this. How do you pronounce serif? Here we go. Serif. Oh, she doesn't know how to say it. How does she say it? Serif. Serif. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe because that's the correct pronunciation. I, I've always called it serif. I th don't you think serif sounds better? No. I can to try this video here. Um, <laughs> oh, a little commercial at the keep, beginning. You're going to keep trying until the, you find one that says. Yeah. Here we go. Emmasaying.com. Serif. Oh, she doesn't know how to say it either. <laughs> oh, come on. I think you should start a campaign in 2019 to get the word serif to change. No, because that is one of the things I need to change about myself in 2019. <laughs> oh, look. Look at Webster's Dictionary, how they have it pronounced. Yeah. Uh, look at uh, the pronunciation guide. Serif. Serif. <laughs> I'm looking at it online here, so I know I'm looking at oh, your okay, screen. Great. Uh Serifed. Serifed. See, there's a T on the end of it. No one's saying it properly. No, that's what it that's if you have the E D at the end of it. Okay. You, you, they put a T on the end of it there. Yes, but serifed. If if you if you have it with an E D. Yeah. See the E D at the end of it? Uh, see, I, I should just be the... I like that when you're the king, you can't speak English incorrectly. The king's English. Whatever the king says goes. Yeah, uh, and Mary, they are they do do a very good job with their software. Um, and that was one of the biggest problems with my girlfriend, uh, for my girlfriend, because she still uses Page Plus. She loves Page Plus. Um, and even though they don't make any updates for it, she still swears by Page Plus. And this is the same company that's created this uh, this new hmm. tool. So, um, yeah, I, I would recommend them too. Um, they're very easy to use. Um, so, you know what? Yeah, oh, one of the, Paint Shop Pro. Oh, I remember Paint Shop Pro. Yeah, um, I'll tell you one of the things that drives me the craziest. How, how many? Any of you ever used GIMP? Yes, use GIMP. Oh my goodness! Um, GIMP is not very user friendly. No, I like. It's like yeah, you use it if you are one that understands command line Linux. That's who uses GIMP. Because you go, you open, you have your image, and then you go add some text, and it opens another window somewhere else, and it's like what? I don't. Um, uh, you, let's know, see. you know, Mary, I, I have I have to say with the Photoshop. Their old model, where you had to buy it up front and spent like five hundred dollars to buy it, yeah, that was way expensive. And that's back in the days when I used to crack their software and still use it. I no longer crack their software. I actually use it legitly. And I think if you want one program, if you're just looking for uh, Photoshop, yeah, uh, Affinity is great because it's a one-time buy. You you spend money and then that's it. You you don't have to. Um, you don't have to pay monthly, but if you're using something that's industry standard, if you want something that's industry standard, um, which Photoshop is, um, and you're just paying monthly, right? Yeah. Well, see, I pay for the entire suite. So I, I get, not only do I get Photoshop, but I get InDesign, I get Illustrator, which I use to create a lot of my, um, logos and stuff like that because it's, uh, it's vector based. I get uh, Audition, which I use to record my uh, my podcast, the audio. I get uh, um, Premiere, which I do video editing and After Effects. Um, so I get all those programs plus a, a bunch more. Um, they actually now have um, Premiere Rush, which is allows me to edit video on my phone, on my iPhone. Um, so I get all that for 50 bucks a month. For, yeah. for Adobe, and that's that's huge. That's that's to me that is affordable. If you're yeah. looking for just Photoshop, it's twenty bucks a month. 
and you always have an updated copy of the software. Yeah. So That's when there's just... go ahead. Yeah, so when there's new versions and new features, you don't have to do the upgrade like you do with like Affinity um, when they put new features out unless you, you might have to resubscribe or up you know pay the update fees. Yeah, the uh, you know a few years ago when they came out with that for Office, you know you could pay so much a month just to use Office online. I thought that is so dumb. Uh, but then you know that was just me not seeing something that was coming along because I I do Office 365 for the reason that I like just always having the current version. I it cost me nine nine dollars a year Canadian or maybe it's 119. And um, basically, I always have the latest stuff. So when I saw that uh, uh, Adobe was doing that, um, I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Because Photoshop is nice in the sense that, like, there are some things that you can get that you open up in Photoshop and, and they're like logos and you can put in your own text. And it doesn't work in PaintShop Pro, which I have up here. Um, and uh, so it gets to be a little bit... Uh, 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 it gets to be a little bit challenging, but um, Johan says Affinity you receive updates and upgrades. So, which is uh, uh, that's an interesting model in that you would keep getting upgrade updates and upgrades. Um, I guess at some point, once they have the user base, they'll develop some other source of income because eventually you saturate it. Although, if you're coming up with something, if you're going after people that are using. Um, something that they're paying or one of the other major services it could re it could take you a long time to get there i have on my uh, so i have on the screen here paint shop pro this is my thumbnail for today and um one of the things that uh, i do not like about paint shop pro is text um um uh, uh johan says almost everything photoshop can and is compatible with uh PS. So, okay, cool. It looks like something definitely to check out then. Uh, one of the things that does not work well, and I do not know why they can't just make it simple, is, um, is adding text. Because um, I think, is this even, no, it's not text anymore. Maybe it is. Uh, oh yeah, that is text. Um, if I, yeah, just uh, this is a test of wrapping. Uh, text, text just does not work very well in Paint Shop Pro. You want to just type something and have it on there and have a box in the that's black in the background. And now I, I am a very light user of it as well, so I could, I suppose, I could sink time into it. But I kind of always just learn this to the best of what I need to do. But if I want, like, if I want this to be on a background, uh, for the life of me, I do not think that I can put it in a background or in a box. They have text box, but it's just really frustrating. So, you know, what I do is each week I take a, I take the uh, file from the week before and I take my new picture and I'll add it on, and then paste it in and then slide it over and I just change the text. I have it kind of working, but it's yeah. I get stymied by photo stuff, so maybe it'd be good to try uh, try that affinity at some point. Uh, one I th thing I go ahead. One of the things I like with uh, Photoshop and um, and it's just and I'm not I'm not criticizing Affinity because I haven't played around with it, and it's something I I I might do in in, in sometime in the future, because um, I'm always looking for programs for my girlfriend who doesn't like Photoshop because it's too overwhelming. So she likes the 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 serif type style of things. So I'm I'm thinking she'd like uh, this, but um, one thing I, I I could do with um, with uh, Photoshop is there are some things in here that I could make as um, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. Uh, you know, now that I don't have my thought in my head, um, but I can make them as smart objects. So what that means is. Um, when I open up the, the smart object, it creates a another uh, pretty much like another a work area where then I could do all my changes in there, hit save, and it would import it into the current uh, document. So, for example, 
uh, your text for uh, if you go back to your screen, um, if you can go back to that uh, screen uh, with uh, the image for today's. Yeah, switching back. Yeah, I have to. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, like, your the things you change often is the number, the uh, fixed broken image, the um, the the and the, the background picture, and the p- picture, especially the picture. Um, you make that a smart object, and then you can just double click on it. You can do all the editing in there, and then when you put it in there, put it back, it'll be part of that image. Oh, okay. So. It's kind of like making a template ahead of time. Yeah, and I've got the template here. Just yeah, not it's not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I went looking yesterday for for a free filter for this broken glass since it was working on broken images. So I was pretty happy to uh, find that and switch it on there. Uh, Johan, can you just uh, what is the ending of your email address after the at sign and i'll just double check to make sure that i got your mail here i've got that happening in tab right here as soon as someone types that whole chat is going to come flying back in too i think okay um So for those of you in Europe, you're getting very close to 2019. I still have about 12 hours to go here. Yeah, uh, Johan, Johan, what what I'm doing with uh, smart objects, it is non-destructive. So um, I mean, it's it's a layer on top of a layer, um, but the smart object itself. Um, I mean, I can show an example. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have any email here from Johan Peters at Gmail, if that's what your address is, Johan. In fact, uh, I'm trying to look here, get back to the chat here. Maybe if you want to shoot that email to me again, right now, if you have it in your sent file, I'll, I'll double check and make sure that I got it. Chuck's oldest friend is in Cairo for New Year's. That's got to be pretty close to, uh, that's got to be pretty close to 2019 there. Okay, so my notes that I have here, just a couple of sections I was thinking about for the live stream on uh, distraction to diminish, uh, distractions to diminish, and the thing about the live stream, watch me work live stream on Wednesday, January 2nd. So I'm looking for uh, at my business, looking for distractions that I can diminish. I'm looking for new ways that I can generate leads uh, for business. Maybe some things maybe I've overlooked. Uh, also, um, I'm looking at some organization, ways that I can organize things so that I can follow through steps. So for instance, uh, just a quick example would be, well, I'm not going to talk about it. We'll leave it for Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, don't don't spoil it. Uh, Johan says three hours, 20 minutes until the new year in Netherlands. Oh, I got a ways to go. Yeah, you got a ways to go, and I've got to, a ways to go. Hey, you know who's ringing in uh, the new year in your time zone, Vinny? Nobody is ringing the year, new year in my time zone. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, who? Um, the Phil asteroid. Taylor. Oh, I thought you were talking about the asteroid guy. No, he no, technically- no. He, oh, because he, he's technically, Chain. yeah, he, he's technically, he works the same schedule as I do because he, you know. Yeah, so I, but he's, yeah, but he's an idiot. No, no, Phil Taylor is in. What? Uh, 
Bill Taylor's in New York for Christmas and New Year's. Oh, is he really? Yeah. So he was in New York for that big blue glowing sky thing that they had when the power plant had the short. Did you see that? No, I, I'm pretty isolated here in Vermont. <laughs> well, you are talking to people all around the world here. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't pay attention outside of Vermont. Come on. <laughs> all right, uh, here we go. All I have to do is just put it right on here. Wait a minute, he, he's in New York. He should be working on that WordPress thing. Uh, you've been working for a year. All right, so if you're watching this, let's go to videos. And um, let's see, here we go. I'd like to just find one that'll just run without ads coming up. But anyways, that's well, it's YouTube. Yeah, but they're showing links for independent. To... All right, so here's uh, we get past. Okay, here's what it's. Let's see, here we go. Here's what the sky looked like in New York. Let's push play. That's the real thing. It looks like a, a scene from Ghostbusters. Well, that's what they did. They showed the cloud from Ghostbusters out over New York, and it was all blue and swirly, so... That's going to be freaky. Well, it's even better. i got to see if... if maybe they'll, hopefully they'll show a far away shot. Because that's just close. That was... Everyone there knows what's going on. There's what it looked like. I just want to remind everybody that when you're out there with your phone and you're taking video, turn your phone to the side, people. Yes. Widescreen society. Yeah. I think I think I really think what people should do or what uh, or, or news organizations should do is just refuse to show a video that's in portrait. Then people will learn. But somebody but the problem is somebody will do it once and then the other news people will be like well we can't be behind on this so i i know but um just saying that you know our news our local news they tell people hey turn your camera sideways da, da, da. um now here's some I'll, I'll share you something with you that i got at christmas time oh yeah um what did you get at christmas so here's my phone I got a pop socket. Oh, good lord! Well, I did not know about these till a couple of months ago. Hey, listen, if you can live in Vermont and not know that the skies in New York glowed blue and freaked everybody out, try not to be too scandalized that I only knew about pop sockets. Uh, pop sockets a couple of months ago. Well, that's because you don't have a teenage daughter. Yes. Well, and you know it was as a, I don't think she's a teenager, but as a. a a very young woman at a chamber of commerce meeting and she was talking about uh, uh and she works for a company that gets swag and and you know put your name on t-shirts and and all kinds of stuff uh forget what the proper term is but she said she could get pop sockets and she showed it and i and i was like what <laughs> so anyways um so i think that um well i guess that that i guess you could record video that way but it's just so much easier to have it on there and, uh, and actually, if I put it this way, you can just film that way, and it's great. And if you remember from the uh, tour of the studio last week, I have my remote. Uh, I've been putting my phone on this easel for the um, using a remote in the live streams. But what I can now do is I can now put it on the pop socket, and it just rests on a nice angle. It works even better just having it down there. So yes, I got a pop socket and I'm pretty, pretty happy about it. Uh, the other thing that I got, I, and it's, I, I don't have it here to show, uh, it's out in my shop. Uh, my son drives truck for a living and they recently had a, 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 a job where they took brand new um, blades for windmills that are up island. Um, and uh, they're 120 feet long. Uh, but they brought back the old ones, and those were cut up, and they had to, or they had to cut up those and take them to the landfill. So they cut them up into three sections, and uh, 
the last one he asked the fellow, he says, hey, can you cut two feet off of that so I can give one to my dad? Because um, I have, uh, he just knows I like stuff like that. So they did. So and, uh, when we celebrated Christmas two days ago, uh, uh, had a late Christmas at their house, he brought in this, this fin. It's fiberglass, it's carbon fiber in the middle. There's some copper in there. But it's really cool. And uh, his wife thought that he was crazy to get it for me. I think it's great. Uh, every guy that was there thought it was really cool. And I actually thought about putting it up in the shop, but then my wife looked at me like I was as crazy as his wife was looking at him for getting it for me. So I probably will just put it in the garden or something. But that was another fun thing that I got that Christmas time. I was going to wonder, I was going to wonder, you know, how, how your wife, how your wife handles the stuff that when you like, hey, honey, I brought this home. It's something really cool. And she's probably just shakes her head. I, I don't bring too much stuff home anymore. Although I do have I do have a Freightliner um, grill, like the logo that was attached to a grill. I've got that. I have come back. I did find a um, mud flap off of a truck that said, uh, I forget what it said on the mud flap, but it was branded. And it was that side of the road. I brought that home and used it for a floor mat for a long time. That was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think she's sort of... But I have my shop out there, and that's I pretty much, even though I am a bit of a mess here in the house with the, I mean, it's the business here, but um, I do, I think for the most part, I'm pretty good in the rest of the house. Um, years ago, years ago, years and years and years ago, I was driving home and down the road from us about, I don't know, 400 feet, 500 feet, there was uh, an old desk chair on wheels out at the end of the driveway and people put stuff out for free here because you have to pay to get rid of the garbage so um anyways of that whole oh, who's gonna who is going to uh, ever want that it was pretty beat up well lo and behold a couple hours later i look out there and it's out in my carport because my daughter walking home from school and she maybe would have been about 12 or 13 her decided her backpack was too heavy so she put the backpack on the chair and pushed it home <laughs> and i ended up with the chair so and then it meant i had to get rid of it so i said to her i said take that back so i don't know if the people noticed but their chair disappeared for a while and then about six hours later ended up back at the end of their driveway <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so that would have been mysterious for them um no, so uh, yeah, I think I thought it'd be really cool just to put up on the wall in here, but she, I don't think so. I don't think. I mean, I told her that I would like to get some more professional stuff, business-oriented stuff, up on the wall. So the top two, it's just the whole idea. The top of that blade, 120 feet. So at the top, it would be at 120 feet above the center of the fan. Then of course, as it swung around, it'd be 120 feet below. So it's going up and down 240 feet in like who knows how a little of time. And then it would also be, you know, about 20 feet off the ground maybe because you can't have it come down to ground level because it smacks people in the head. And uh, so you just think about all, it was up so high and down and this, the winds, I just thought this is so cool. But I guess you gotta be a guy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have it somewhere. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do? Because then you have a talking point. It's like you're little locked in the, in, in, your, in the corner. I could just put subscribe on it, and I could just stick it right there. People say, what on earth is that? So, yeah, anyways. Hey, so what, uh, yeah, what else? What did you get for Christmas? I don't think we had that talk. Um, what did I get? I yeah. got um, I got a Raspberry Pi. Oh, that's right. You said yeah. we did yeah. talk about this. I don't know if we talked about it on stream, but uh, have you I think got it work have you got it working? Well, I mean, it works. I just have to um, I I just have to finish setting it up for my multimedia center. Okay, I just haven't had time. Like I I also got a. Uh, a thing to go on my desk to make it rise so I can stand at my oh, desk. Good. But it's still in the box. <laughs> they had time. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because you have to clear the desk off to put it on. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the, that's 
My monitors what? are happy. Yeah. No, a Raspberry Pi is not food. Raspberry Pi is a very small computer. Very small <laughs> computer. Like, very it can fit in my hand. YouTube.com. Who typed that in? Yes, Raspberry Pi. Let's check it out here. Raspberry. Raspberry. And, and, and just and just for knowledge, Raspberry is spelled with a P. I know. I put that in there. Raspberry yeah. Pi. I know it doesn't sound like it is, but it's, it's a rat. As in Raspberry Beret. N no. We're not doing it. There's a, a bunch of YouTube videos there. Getting started. Yeah, it's a, it's a, just a cute little, very basic computer. And it has... Um, it has a video port on it. it. Has USB, correct? I have four USBs. I have an HDMI out. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Yep, pretty much. And it runs Linux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this guy will explain it for us, but but it's pretty fast actually. It's not yeah. too bad. Well, it's fast when you're not have to do all the other stuff that we've got yeah. going, right? Exactly. I mean, basically, it's a, a switch. In the sense that it does something, it does something else. It's just always running, right? I guess that's... Uh, it's not really a switch, because there are things called switches, but... Yeah, I was failing to see your point on that one. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, it's not like a... Yeah, I don't know. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Burr, 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 burr. Never mind. I was just thinking that it's just doing a, it's just doing a small number of simple things, and I mean obviously it's fast, but it's not. Well, it's not what I'd be using as a primary computer. Yeah. So I mean, in that aspect, I, I'm not running like uh, you know Premiere and Photoshop and 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 really working it. So no. But um, but for what it. For what I'm using it for, I mean, it, it works well. Mary got a heated mouse. It must be really cold where you are because I wouldn't know of any reason to have a heated mouse. Well, she likes to work out in the barn with the goats, probably. With, with her mouse? Heated mouse. I did not even know those existed. How to make a heated mouse cold, pad. What uh, what model did you get, Mary? I've never heard of such a thing. Well, here's heated mouse pads, but I did not know that. How to make a heated mouse pad? That was easy. You just we take a side of your head. Just take an iron and turn it upside down, and you got a heated mouse pad. Rose Amazon. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's go to Amazon. That's another thing I'm going to talk about on Wednesday. Amazon. Amazon. Are you going to show it to us on the screen? I'm going here. Let's see. Uh, R-O-H-S heated mouse. There it is. No, USB, USB optical Heated mouse, acupressure, hand warmer. Tim, oh. with you the side of your head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course you can see the side of my head. What's your point? Oh, that's great. That like, that's all we can see. We can't see. All right, head. there it is. The heated mouse. Heated mouse. USB optical heated mouse. Bottom heat switch, hand warmer. Comes boxed. This, How cold it is in your in your house that you need a heated mouse? Well, you know, we don't want to get too personal about Mary because we already know that she has size nine feet. But um, <laughs> we do. But I, I, um, she says it's cold enough. My, uh, th my wife suffered from a condition. This is before before we had kids because I think once once she was pregnant, there's. It expanded everything um, from uh, uh, Raynaud's, and it was small veins, 
in the hands and feet. So she had very, very cold hands and feet. And, uh, and it was very hard to warm them up. So I could see that if that was the case, that would be handy. Or if your hands are just cold or you're in a, or you're saving money and keeping the heat down or you're building websites out in the, the goat barn, it'd be great. But he, okay. So here's, here's the uh, problem I, I foresee with this. This is, this is why I'm having a little struggle about this. Sure. You, you you have cold hands, so this really is helpful. But what about your other hand? Well, I, I immediately had this idea. That now that I know that these exist, you could buy two and have a small... You could run the laptop in a backpack. You could have each of these mice plugged into the laptop. The cables going down through your sleeves into your gloves, and you would have warm hands when you're out and about. You know they make these little packs that you can put in your gloves that will warm up your hands, that you don't have to wire yourself up. I know. Uh, also, uh, not this to mention there, Tim. I'm sorry to interrupt, but not to mention that having your backpack in your backpack running is not very good for the fans because it will stifle them. You'll overheat and you'll ruin your CPU. Right, but if you had it in with your coat, that would be warm too. And you'd have a dead computer. I know, but you could hook up some venting or something like that. Uh, this reminds me of. Uh, she says the mouse is awesome. That's great. Is it like, um, like how much warmer does it get, Mary? Do you have one of those parameters that you just point with the laser and it tells you how hot it is? Uh, this, uh, all of this discussion reminds me of a present that I bought my wife. That, because, and this goes back to her having very cold feet and always being cold. Um, I thought for sure that I was going to show her that I, that I got her. That I understood that I, I could... Instead of just buying a gift, I could get something that she wanted that would just uh, that would that just said, "Hey, you know what? I, I get you." And um, so I bought her hunting socks that heat, and uh, and this is this was a while ago because um, these hunting socks ran off of D-sized batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I was so excited to give these to her because I knew she'd just be happy. She could wear them around the house. It would just be great. Anyways, I was so sure. And when she opened them, I was as wrong as I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just absolutely, totally, totally missed it. It was just, I, I was so sure. I went from hero to... I mean, Zero. She, yeah, but she didn't. Yeah, she wasn't mad or angry. She just kind of looked at me like, "What on earth are you thinking? Were you thinking?" So, anyways, that's cool to know. You told her what you were thinking. Well, I just, yeah, I just anyways. I mean, that it it wasn't like I gave her a vacuum for her birthday. It wasn't like it wasn't that kind of mess. It was just. I guess sort of if I had given her the top of this that windmill blade probably would have gotten the same look so the video seems to be a little jerky right now is that uh, for everybody or is it, that yeah yeah it is for me it was for me for a moment there okay so I'm just gonna close a few windows oh actually I have paint shop pro still open here so I'll close that and you know, Mary, Mary just said I keep it on medium, and it gives me it, it's just perfect for me. And that's the that's that's the that's point. Great. I mean, it's not a gift that someone would give to me, but it's someone that gives to you, and that and it makes that's the point. I mean, you love it. Um, morning soft shell jacket. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably. I think that that's. Uh, I think Johan's talking about a jacket that's actually got the warming. Oh, warming, stuff in it. warming. I I read that as warning. And yeah, I was warning. Like, Careful warning about a soft shell jacket. Well, yeah, I would. Warming. I would not buy you a heated mouse, Vinny. But you know what? I will buy you a haircut. I'm gonna pay for your haircut when you come to Canada. 
<laughs> it's going to be the cheapest haircut you've ever bought. I don't have any hair. I'll get you a shave then. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, it's like it's like a raspberry pie is not a gift for a lot of people. It was something that I wanted. Yeah, so, no, that's cool. Yeah. I actually had someone. Uh, my aunt sent me thirty-five dollars, and and then I and then I received some cash from uh, from another friend and a gift. And it's like, oh, I might, what I might get something that I want with this instead of something that I need. So I'm considering get I'm considering getting one of those uh, um, macro adjust uh, macro settings or uh, lenses. Not lenses, the tubes that extend your existing uh, lenses with on a camera, so I can do more. Like I can zoom in on things that are really small and take pictures of them. That would be a macro. Yes, but macro because you can get macro lenses, but this is like, yeah. Anyways, thinking about getting that. <laughs> you know, you can't go wrong with cash. There's a uh, there's a local church that sells those lenses, eh? Cash? No, that sells those lenses. I don't know. Ho the, yeah, holy macros. Oh. <laughs> I walked right into that one, didn't I? Uh, yeah. Uh, Johan says, "C comfort protection." Let's go and see that. Comfort protection, go to the full screen there, so we're not looking at it the side of my head. Are you talking about the macro extension rings? That's no, no, he's talking about his... Uh... No, 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 be below that. Oh, yeah, he had... Uh, uh... Yes, yes, I'm talking about that. I will look, uh, I'll, I'll bring one up. So these are, uh, let's see, what do we got? Do we have a, let's switch this to English. Heated gloves, heated soles, heated products. See, you know, the problem with being a fat guy, I don't really worry about being cold. Okay. So, I do mean, work, the, the process work. of walking alone creates so much friction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty warm. Oh my goodness, it's good that I've not been drinking because I'm keeping lots of things in my head right now. <laughs> you know, I'm giving you some softballs too. I know. I was just thinking, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I can take it. I can I'm take just it. thinking, okay, what you really are worried about is accidentally becoming unconscious on a walk and someone cutting you open and climbing inside to stay warm. You think I'm a tauntaun? <laughs> uh that and the or the revenant oh my god it reminds me of the a family guy episode where they they did that they did the whole star wars and <laughs> and they cut peter open and they climbed inside peter mary says that she's doomed fat and cold yeah uh. i just i i don't understand how it see i i've never been cold um I I, ver I run very very warm. I have enough body heat to light up Chicago. So, would the sky be blue? The um, sky would be blue. Yeah. Hey, did, uh, these gloves are they run off of batteries? I guess. I guess you could charge USB batteries. Well, here's one. It's got a touch screen, so it must be batteries. Nice. That's what I want: is gloves with a touch screen. Yeah, I want 149 euro gloves too. Hey man, if it's got a touch screen, that's fine. You know, I'm an American, so anytime I see a comma in a price, I worry. Comma <laughs> <laughs> means something different to us. Oh, let me change screens here back to the chat, and I'm going to go onto my Amazon here, and I will show you the rings that I was talking about. And we'll just take a quick look at them here. Um, I yes, I am. I am often cold. So, for instance, my son-in-law, my son and daughter-in-law live in a condo now. We were up there for Christmas a couple of days ago, and uh, they it's boiler heat, so this the pipes are. Anyways, their house is super hot. It was so warm, I almost took my sweater off. <laughs> 
So, um, Tim's wish list. Let's see. What have we got on here? Uh, yeah, here's the, here's the thing right here. Um, oh, uh, uh, EOS, cause so I've got a, an EOS camera macro extension tube set for extreme close-ups 19 what, bucks what does that go on i mean does it go on a, oh it's a canon eos okay. yeah you, you you put it on the body of the camera and then you put your lens on and the nice thing about the eos is because then it has to you need to transmit the signal right through to from the lenses but uh see i want to be able to take picture of wool like that or not uh yeah it goes on uh yeah it fits on fits on like that so that's uh that's one thing uh the other thing too is what, what do you need to take so close no i that's it's just well first of all i always figured that the any tech that you buy is becomes tech that you can make some money with if you have the chance Right, so someone's having a conversation. Say, well, if you want, I could do a, you know, I could come out and do a super close-up picture of that with my macro lens, and that would be a really cool background for your site. <gasps> oh yes, that that sounds great. I like that. If you don't have the lens, you can't do it. So, uh, but I just think it would be fun because uh, here's the other thing. Yeah, things are really laggy there. Uh, here's the other thing. Have you ever noticed on Facebook, everybody is. Facebook and Instagram, everyone's taking pictures of these big, beautiful scenes where they're canoeing through the mountains or they're at a concert, everything. Very few people post tiny pictures like of the very small world that's all around us. So I'm thinking, yeah, I don't, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to shun the Instagram life, I have some fun and I'll just take some very, very small, tiny super macro pictures i can so. see it now the name of your instagram page tiny tim's tiny world just got tiny tim's tiny world ah tiptoe through the tulips oh man my i think i have a rib out of place from laughing earlier during the fat segment <laughs> <laughs> during the fat segment. oh yeah my back is just it's just a little bit out. i think it's gonna go back in though i can just imagine the conversation later at dinner so how was your day oh i uh i broke uh, one of tim's ribs yeah yeah oh and That's then they have another kind of lens here it's called a diopter Ooh, a Ooh. diopter 10 times diopter close-up macro lens. So that's the actual lens itself. That is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that... Uh, Johan Peters is, is suggesting a McDiet. Is that a, a diet of McDonald's food? Because I don't think that works. Uh, hard to say. Uh, there's, some, there's some healthy stuff at McDonald's, no? Yeah. <sighs> See, when I think healthy, I do not think of McDonald's. You know, I, I have done something for my health. I mean, my doctor said, you are close to a small Buick. You need to lose some weight. <laughs> so I said, thanks. That's not, look, that's not going to put the rib. That's not going to put the rib back in place, man. <laughs> Lines like that. <laughs> so so I, I've actually stopped drinking um soda as much as i i have oh, okay that's good that's not that's not healthy and you're playing no, pokemon so you're getting a lot of walking in you know i haven't played i haven't logged into pokemon for a couple of days that's that's the problem with me is i i'll play a game for you know really really a lot like really consistently and then i'll just stop i know but this one i'm gonna keep publicly shaming you because you need to send me gifts i haven't been by that um that saint mary's um <laughs> church recently so well, that's the said, only gift they give you i know uh johan said tim needs a personal maintenance monday yeah well we're going to talk a little bit about that on wednesday in the watch me work live stream so on twitch um but uh yeah you know one of the things i did consider recently is that i i may in the new year stop eating after seven o'clock at night 
Although last night I was hungry. And so I was going to go get some of the Christmas food that's still here. But then I thought, you know, so I took a couple oranges. So I might, I might uh, try to only eat fruit after 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night. Well, that doesn't work if you have a schedule like ours where we're up longer. Yes, that's true. But, uh, you know, but instead of like having a bowl of ice cream or eating potato chips late at night or something like that, if I just, I don't know. That's that's something that I was thinking about. Well, see, this is what I do is I we read, I mean, I don't know if you guys have anything like Costco. Do you know what Costco is? Oh, we've got Costco. Yeah. Okay. So... One thing you can get at Costco, what we can get at Costco, um, I don't know what Canadian Costco's have, uh, but is uh, if you like grapes, they have these things, four pounds of grapes. Okay. I snack on grapes a lot. Oh, that's uh, good. They're sweet, so you get that sweet thing, but they're not as bad as, uh, uh, for you as ice cream is. No, no, Totally. Well, and this there's sweet, there's sweet like natural sweet, and there's also like here's a bowl of sugar sweet. Yeah, like eat a bowl of sugar. Hey, on the screen here, I just saw something that I have added to my uh, list here, and I'm doing, how, how many of you? Okay, I'm gonna check that in just a sec, Johan. How many of you cut your own Ethernet cables and put your own ends on? That would be Tim. Yeah, because I had a kit years ago, and uh, actually I was helping a, a, my friend when they moved their web hosting company, their servers, and setting up. So, um, But anyways, my kit, you have to get the wires out, untwist the pairs, put them in a certain order, put them inside the little uh, Ethernet, the plug, and they all have to go in the, the right little slots, and then you crimp them and then you have to match it up on the other side so i spent all day yesterday setting up three cables or yesterday afternoon i knew it would be fiddly um but anyway so i put youtube videos on i was just watching and listening and working away two of the cables worked the third one was did not work but i just need some like little six inch cables or one foot and you can buy a one foot cable for like five bucks or something like that on amazon but anyway since i sat there i thought you know it's been years since i bought this kit there's got to be a better way and check this out there is um uh let's see i gotta show their pass through uh connectors i find somewhere where there's a picture of them uh, maybe there's a picture on i guess if you can you see um on the uh on the blow up of this uh, jar they now have it so that you get the wires out and you put them into the connector oh, yeah that would make life a little bit easier and they stick out the end you crimp it and then you just you have a crimping tool that will just cut those off or else you can just do it with exact knife uh, or a box cutter so that is like when i saw that I thought, oh that definitely is something that I could use. And the great thing about that is that for traditional uh, Ethernet cables, not necessarily the ones that are really commercially made that are flat and all glued together, but for commercial ones, you could take a six foot one, if you needed a, say a, a six inch length to go from one device to another, you could actually cut that, uh, that commercial one or that one that's not just like cable that you have to put both ends on, Add one of these, and you don't, you don't need to buy cables anymore. Um, you can just be snapping on these little ends and crimping them and tidying up. Because I have a real nest of Ethernet cables in that corner of the room, and I would love to. I, 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 I want to just tidy them up before the fire department comes to do an inspection because I registered my business for 2019, so the city is going to do a fire inspection. Uh, anyways... Um, that is so that is something I'm thinking will be a very nice thing to tidy up my life because then you can you can just have all kinds of um, cables that are just the right length so a lot of the cable management like I have a cable that runs from if you remember the tour last week it runs it runs from to the left of my stand-up desk 
around this corner of the wall all the way over it runs underneath the board it's nicely hidden so that's great but over there there's an extra I don't know an extra 10 15 feet that's wound up and I just have tied up and then it plugs in so it kind of makes it cluttery in this way with these ends you could say this is all I need instead of having this six feet looping left over I'll cut it off put an end plug it in and it's tidy and that cuts down on clutter so that was kind of a cool thing that no uh, I, I agree because I, I I find that um you know it, you're setting up your desk and um your 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 cable is just maybe just a couple feet too shy but you don't quite need a 10 foot one but yeah. you need you need like eight feet but they don't come in eight feet they come in six and ten you know this is definitely a uh, a much better um solution and yeah. I, I i know i joked about it but i i would make my own uh wires i actually used to make my own um uh cable wires so yeah yeah so here's uh and this is uh canadian price but uh 10 six, 10 six inch ethernet cables 24 dollars um so you could actually just um uh you could make your own with uh, we all have that bl those blue cable stuff not as pretty as the e endings of course but i mean whatever uh well, and if you know, the best thing um you, you get the the industrial stuff in a box so you get that shielded good stuff yeah in a box and then you put the the ends on it much better than buying the long long or short ones from like Amazon because a lot of times they're not shielded and they're 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 very flimsy where they're just um, um, wires in some sort of loose plastic around it yeah now having said that I want to buy these kits just because they have them the p images are so nice God they have those wound around that's great you probably have that macro uh, th thing on their camera uh, possibly Ooh. There you, you can do go. product photos. Yeah. Well, there you go. Although, again, in keeping with what we'll be discussing on Wednesday, maybe not. Product photos are the worst things to take pictures of. So they are uh, they're just always moving. No, no, they're just so hard to do. Yes. Um, all right. Oh, paste a link to those. Uh, which, what do you want the link to, Mary? The uh, I think, ends? I think she posted it in that, that box you were showing with the ends. That's when she wrote oh, that. Oh, sure. Okay. Let me, let me do that right here. The ends. Yeah. Now, these are Cat 6 as well. So, Cat 6 and Cat 6A, which I think is important. Uh, actually, the two lines that I replaced yesterday are um, um, okay. Here we go. I get the link here. Here you go, right there. Uh, the two lines that I replaced when I looked at them, they were Cat Five, uh, which is was okay because the one cable ran over to my VoIP box because I use the our phone voice over internet protocol, and. I thought I pasted. Did that not go in there? Oh, never mind. That's not the link. Text. Copy. Here we go. There it is. Uh, and then uh, the other one was out to my shop, which I hardly used, but I wouldn't have gotten the full internet speed on Cat 5. But So these are Cat 6. I think there's a slight difference with the um, individual um, wires that go in there. Uh, for the size and then also here's a let's, let's see you need a crimping tool pass through wire crimper and I'll put you uh, I'll give you a link to that as well if you don't have a crimper and this one this one just slices off the wires at the end well here's a good picture of those uh, those plugs what they what they do just peel lots of wire out 
and then get them right through you. And then it's the other thing too. The other thing is tricky. Don't watch the picture on the right, but where the mouse is, it's very tricky. We can't doing... see it. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> it's very tricky to uh, get these in properly and still have the uh, the outer sheathing there just catch inside there but with this with these it's great because you just pull a bunch through but i guess what this does is and it's always got a stripping and cutting thing there too um they do have <clears throat> excuse me they do also have a color code on the side of this here so you see uh you'll see the the code to set up for hook it setting up the cables but you really just have to have it the same on both ends whatever you do so they've got green they've got they've got say light green solid light orange oh and then they got blue so uh i guess there is a certain way to do it for some situations basically what i do though is i just make sure that's the same color code going across but i guess if you're using them for if you need to do a twisted pair perhaps i just do mine straight through but I don't have any fan. I, I know that if you need to do a twisted pair, then you would probably want to uh, follow the directions on the side there. But and uh, Johan says orbitview.nl. Let's see here. Do do do. What do we got happen here? What are we looking at here? Oh, a lot of web shop owners use Orbit View. Oh, is that oh, it's a a printing? Oh, for product shots. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. What okay, I got it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool. Yeah, this is a neat one right here. It's like a spa for your product. Put it in, get your camera up. It's all white around. That's cool. A little video here. De Orbitvu Alpha Shot 360 is een compacte fotostudio met automatische achtergrondverwijdering. Het systeem maakt zowel stilstaande 2D-beelden als bewegende 360 graden presentaties en is uitermate geschikt voor het fotograferen van middelgrote objecten tot 30 bij 30 centimeter. Oh, that's Schoenen, very nice. modeaccessoires, huishoudelijke apparaten en gereedschappen passen uitstekend in deze Alpha Shot. De krachtige, traploos instelbare LED-verlichtingspanelen oh, zorgen dat u perfect belichte packshots voor uw webshop of folders kunt maken. Het systeem wordt geleverd inclusief de AlphaShot Editor software die zowel de studio als de camera aanstuurt en werkt probleemloos op Windows en Mac. De AlphaShot yep, 360 beschikt over de bekroonde Orbit 360 graden technologie waarmee u perfecte rondom presentaties maakt voor uw webshop. Oh, that's cool. Deze zijn geschikt voor PC, then, uh, tablet nice. of mobiel apparaat en direct te gebruiken the, uh, in social media campagnes. Het Or... Alpha Shot systeem verwijdert automatisch de achtergrond zonder nabewerking. Oh, oh my goodness, and de foto got... oh, of presentatie oh, this is wordt the, geheel vrijstaand the gemaakt the turn... door middel van de Alpha kanaal techniek. Nice. En dat bespaart u veel uh... tijd. Beschik snel en flexibel over beelden nice. met een constante kwaliteit in een kostenbesparend ontwerp. Perfect. Benieuwd wat een alpha shot voor u kan besparen? See. Maak een vrijblijvende demo afspraak. I understood most of what that guy was saying too. That's what impressed me. Um. Well, see, Mary, we have uh, at at the shop we have our own paint company too, so this would be perfect for um, shooting product photos. Mary, do you have those fainting goats? Because if you have those fainting goats, you could take pictures of them on this as long as you keep scaring them and they stay still. Fainting goats. Oh, man. Johan, how much does that unit there cost? A lot. Well, it should cost a lot because people are making money from it. So, yeah, I think the I think faint, uh, if you could get your goats to stand still and put them in one of those... You could rebrand it the goat shot instead of the alpha shot.
Yeah, because this is... Uh... Well, they do have an English language one on here. That's a pretty nice unit, though. See, if you're doing a lot of stuff on eBay or products or or things like that, that would be great just to pop it in there, take a picture, and done. But Very cool. Uh, the other thing that I thought that I might do is uh, get some of that... Um, Get some of that light diffusing stuff that you that you suggested, Vinny, to put over my lights so I can get rid of these uh, super bright spots that I have from from the bulbs. But uh, well, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, no, I think so too. I would like more even light. I have something really cool that uh, it might take it would probably take me a little while to uh, set up here. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys a B a BRB and I won't bring up the uh, censored chicken. I'm just going to be somewhere else in the room here for a second. Oh, autofocus must be on too for the camera. Okay. I'll show this to you guys. All right. I'll move this. I need to move this back here a little bit. And how's that? Uh, check out how this looks on the screen there. All right, and I'm gonna go full screen. Yeah, that looks kind of dirty, but I also have daylight coming in on the other side. Uh, I have a client, my Firewise client, who. I did some uh, that a promotional video for, and they ordered up one of these for me to use in the videos. Cause so this is from uh, Vistaprint. This is my Put the meatballs on the stove. <laughs> okay, I just got reminded to put the meatballs on the stove. I forgot that goes through my. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Alexa, Alexa, cut. Stop. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's got some cool legs on it here. It's got these uh, three uh, tent pig things. Let's see here. That's oh, actually one tent pig. Whoops. So I put this down here. I'm going to disappear in a second. I have to put this pole in here. And then put that there. Uh oh, I did not get the pole on properly at the back. Yeah, this happened to me last time. There we go. So then I have to put this to the back. And then I have a lovely backdrop for doing my promotional videos. Of course, I would clean it up and center it and move everything. But so when I saw that vinyl, I thought, wow, that would probably work really well on if I had something for my stuff that I could just put up on the wall, it sort of fix out some of the uneven evenness in the wall. So I think you should just, just get, a, get sticker. a sticker. Yes, but then. I, if I had something like this, I could actually go to a trade show or something, and promote myself. The other thing too is it would be nice to uh, move it. I'm gonna have to fiddle around with this and get it just right because I haven't. I've only set it up the day that it arrived. I haven't even done any filming, which I need to do. But, anyways, uh, I like that it looks nice. And when I zoom in, as I will with the camera, I'm going to be able to have just more of this here and me without other stuff around. So, which is good. I can even stand in front of it a bit. But, anyways, that's a cool little thing that's hanging around in my office now. 
let's get back to the chat here. Mary says, before she was a web designer, she had a portrait studio in downtown, down Vancouver, U.S. for seven years. Yeah, I saw that on one of your Facebook posts when you showed uh, that you decided to stop doing the photography because you were uh, missing out on stuff with your family. So, And Johan says it's 449 euros. Yeah, they don't have the prices on there, but he knows that the system started at 449. Oh, that large one is 4,500. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Vinny is probably putting the meatballs in the oven. No, they're, 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 they're on. on. Oh, are they? Okay, good. They're in the, uh, they're in the uh, slow cooker. I just heard someone the other day saying that if he... They're talking about things they'd like to change in their life, and the guy said he would like to, uh, he would like to build a time cap, a time machine, and go back and r not name his daughter Alexa. <laughs> well, you know, you can change it so it doesn't go based off that. Oh, okay. You give it a different name. You you can actually. There's two options. There's there's Alexa and there's um, Echo. So unless you have one of your kids named Alexa and your other kid named Echo, then you're pretty much met, you're screwed. My daughter and son-in-law had uh, an Alexa hmm. system. And I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it wasn't working well for them, so they went and they, now they've got Google. So. Yeah, uh, this was a free gift, so that's why I have this. Yeah, no, that's yeah. If it works, it works. All right. Um, yeah, I think that that's one of the general principles that we should apply as web designers, and uh, that I notice about people. And this is talking uh, about the price of this uh, alpha shot thing here. Um, is that uh, if if someone is, and I think I I know we've talked about before. If someone is wants to make money on their website, if they're starting a business, then they should uh, be charged a fair price for the work that you're doing, unless you've got skin in the game, and you're doing something on spec, because um, uh, I like watching Shark Tank on uh, on Netflix, and up here in Canada, we also have Dragon's Den, which is pretty cool, um, but um, it's a Canadian version, although they sometimes bring on kookier people. They seem to be more serious people on Shark Tank. Uh, like a hundred percent serious, but what I like is um, what I notice is that I, I've run into people who have ideas, but don't have a plan or don't have a mindset to pull off their business idea, and so they're it's not that they're playing around, but they're just not there yet. And if you you can spend a lot of time trying to help them out and being kind and helpful, but um, if uh, but then if they're not going to make it, you're just wasting your time. So to start a business, to run a business, you're going to have to spend money. You're going to have to hire good people. And uh, and if you're a good person in doing your web design and what you're doing and someone can't afford you, they that sort of show that could be a precursor to how successful they're going to be. That said, there was recently a guy on Shark Tank and he had a written up done some legal paperwork for a guy and he uh, the fellow offered him stock in the company and at that point they really needed the money so instead he just took the two thousand uh, dollars for the legal work that he did um, it was a guy that uh, the comp the guy was it was the early stages of under armor the um, um, the clothing line and so they asked him, how much would those shares be worth now had you just taken the shares for that $2,000 work? And the guy said, uh, $250 million. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, it's more than just, oh, if you can't pay, you're not, you're not going to make it a business. But, um, you know, when you look at something like this that has such a commercial, uh, a commercial application, it has a high price. But um, because it's good and quality and because it's in that business and, and serious people are going to be buying it, then you can, you can ask for a good price. I mean, if this was just something cardboard that came with a roll of duct tape for you to put together, 
and a couple of light bulbs, then you would kind of know what you're dealing with. But, and of course, the most famous case of that is the fellow who uh, took Facebook shares in, to paint the Facebook office and ended up crazy, crazy rich. So, I wouldn't mind being crazy, crazy rich. I'm already crazy, so I'm already halfway there. Yes, yeah. Uh, also, um, uh, Johan says, I 100% agree with Tim, but in the Netherlands, a lot of people are killing the market. Develop sites besides their main business, so complete websites for 399 Yeah, yeah, and I think that uh, that's something that we've uh, discussed and mentioned before. That uh, I mean, there. Uh, although I do think, though, a great... Um, a great advertising line that we could use in our own areas is uh, tell people that uh, I fix websites that your nephew designed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and I know that starting out for me, uh, I had a very low price and um, and all sorts of, uh, I had a very low price and, and I figured in my mind, that's how I was going, if I did lots of work I would uh, make lots of money because I was would have lots of clients. Um, but then I just realized after a while that that was not getting me anywhere and was just killing me. Uh, but I also, though, um, I'll tell you, if, if I ran into some people that uh, just needed a quick small site, I would probably still do it for them just because I'm at the point where that would just be some quick money that would be good. But I do, after all these years, have, uh, for instance, this is my Firewise client here, I uh, have some really good clients that pay for, you know, that, that value the work. But it takes a while to get there, too. So sometimes, sometimes you, uh, sometimes it, it takes a while to get up to, to have clients like that. So, and, and, and you got to remember, especially when you're starting out, that, that just because a client pays you does not mean it's a good client for you. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Johan says there's lots of clients coming from WordPress and now Joomla so they get uh, to, so they get what they want and not and not accepting limitations of WordPress yet. Mary says we need to make sure people understand all Joomla can do. Ah, if only there was like videos. And that, and that's the thing. I mean, I've always said that WordPress's marketing team is much better than Joomla's because people know the name WordPress. WordPress is a very common name. And when you say Joomla, um, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to relay a, a quick little story. Yeah, sure. But uh, recently was setting up uh, set my girlfriend's podcast with this new company, with this new network. Um, they asked if we had a word, uh, we had we had a WordPress site and I said, uh, no, I, it's a Joomla site, and he goes, "Oh, you went with a, uh, you went with an obscure one," <laughs> and I, I go, "No, actually, it's it's been voted the number one, uh, number one uh, CMS uh, program out there, four years running, um, so it's not, uh, it's not like an obscure one. It's one of the top uh, CMSs out there, but people just don't know it." Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other thing too is that, uh, like in the Facebook, uh, uh Johan says, correct. And the easy interface with basic options. I think when Joomla has an easily interface, AKA an easier interface, AKA WordPress. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's funny cause I don't find the WordPress that, that easy, uh, as no, an interface. but, uh, in the Facebook group on the, the Juma Facebook group the other day, someone said, are there any videos on how to make my Joomla site or how to make Joomla into a blog site? And I was like, so I replied and I said, okay, I said, this is maybe because of my age, but a blog is just short for weblog. And it's just a collection of your art, your thoughts. It's just articles. So that's already set up for that. So it really comes down to customizing the site to have what you want and modules and, and, and the, the look that you want. But it already is a blog site as soon as you install it. Like if you just want to slam some information on, just install it and it's there. 
Um, but I think people somehow along the line, and it's probably the s same demographic as far as that, uh, just think, oh, you need a website. Well, I heard the word perfect. So, oh yeah, I've got a friend that does word perfect and my, oh, you should just do this and, and such and such. Um, that people think, oh, well, yeah, if you want a blog, you should have word perfect because word perfect does blogs. And it's like a blog, it's like a diary. Like you can go to the store and buy a diary, my diary, or you can go to the store and buy a notepad and write your diary in it. I mean, that's basically what it is. And yes, everybody who's listening now, he actually meant WordPress, not WordPerfect. Oh, did I say WordPerfect? Several times. Well, there you go. WP. Um, <laughs> but you're well, right. I mean, yeah, Johan but... says easy it, uh, in the options. Yeah, and I turn off a lot of the options on, on, on sites for some people. Uh, non Joomla users are getting scared of all the options. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why... Um, yeah. I can, I can see that people go in and say, oh, there's too much. But if you build a site for someone and say, you want to know everything or you want it simple, and they say, oh, just I just want simple basic stuff, like I, a site I'm working on for a friend... Uh, great. So I just locked it all up so that um, so that uh, I just I created a I made them a suit. I made them a kind of super user account, but I hit a whole bunch. I, I duplicated super user, but then I just hit everything and it gave them information what they needed to access. So. So you basically made an administrator. Yeah. yeah. And although administrator, I think, gave them more than I wanted. I was fiddling around. Well, and and you know to go along with the whole options thing, and that's anything with options. I mean, if you really want to create just a blog site, all you want to do is blog. You know, you use a tool that works the best. And quite honestly, I would encourage someone to build a WordPress site if they just want a blog. However, if you want a blog now, but you're thinking maybe down the road you want to do other things. I would encourage you to start with a Joomla site. Yeah. Start simple because Joomla is really easy to expand. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing about starting simple with things, right? Because um, I mean, it's in another Facebook group, another you, a Facebook group I'm in uh, for YouTubers, someone said, to, Hey, what do you guys use for web pages? So everyone's chiming in Wix and Squarespace. And then someone else said that they, they use WordPress and, and, but so I basically, I said, look, uh, uh, I said, um, if you, and, and the person that asked the question, what do you, uh, what, do, what do you use to build your website or to work on your websites? And I pointed out, I said, if you, I said, it's very key that you said your websites. I said, cause if you're using Wix or Squarespace or even GoDaddy's in-house website thing, you don't own a website. You just have a website that your content is on because you can't download and back them up, and you can't uh, you can't you can't back them up and download them, and you can't copy them or or move them to another server. I said it's just like renting. You you own the contents, but any improvements that you do is nothing. And so to your point, Vinny, about expanding. Yeah, if someone is like, oh, I just need somewhere to just put some information, great. But as soon as you're going to expand, or if you're go if you're going to put all your time and effort in something, sure, and even Wix and Squarespace have stuff for e-commerce and that, but you are totally, totally stuck if you ever want to move or if they ever do something by mistake and lose your site or, or anything like that. I mean, what if what if Wix goes belly up one day? What if they decide we're done? Yeah, this is not this is not we can't maintain this. We're 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 going to be fishmongers from now on. Yeah, you know your your site's stuck in that. I mean, the same could be said. Well, what if Joomla? What if Joomla went belly up? Well, Joomla is an open source software. Yeah, I mean anybody could could make a fork of it. I mean, yeah. Joomla itself is a fork. Yeah, off of Mambo. Exactly. And Johan says he makes websites that uh, can maintain from the front end and the complex stuff he does for people. And that's a great a great yeah. approach as well. Yeah, exactly. Log in the front end, add your content. The one trick that I found with uh, the last time I was trying to do is I could not get, and maybe I have to revisit it, but I could not get J2Store 
to work in the front end. Although I was, I actually had to buy the ACL uh, uh, extension that uh, corrects errors in the database. So that, that might have been the issue. Let me just uh, make sure I've got this email here. Yeah, I got your email, Johan. Great. Great. I'll check that out and read that up later. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a pretty cool way to go about it too, is the, to the front end. But yes, I can see. Well, I mean, who's yeah? I guess. I just see. Guess, how I, I started oh go ahead Sorry. no no you go ahead well i was just gonna say how i start my websites is i actually have a a pre-install of joomla already created that already has a lot of the extensions that i normally use already installed um you know so the uh, some from regular labs uh kiba backups and and whatnot so they're already installed i also have it already pre-built so i have an acl system already in effect that blocks off a lot of stuff from them so it doesn't overcomplicate their life yeah that's already and then i just use uh you know uh, i keep a backup to make a, a copy of the site and go from there yeah yeah that's a good approach then you're not setting up that stuff all over and you can also make you can customize it the way that makes sense to you or that you want to go with well that from there i just i mean if i pre primarily build stuff in gantry i have gantry already set up and ready to go for me yeah. um it, it just it takes a lot of it, it takes a lot of time to to create those those uh uh you know minor stuff that you do all the time um so i just pre-build it and then i i also have it hooked up to my joomla so it's always getting always reminding me to keep updating it yeah. so i always have a updated version of joomla with the updated software all ready to go yeah yeah and that's 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 a good way to be organized happy new year there to you too johan yes johan's going out yeah happy new year you uh, johan thanks for all the sharing today yeah i should probably wrap things up here too my son and daughter and blah and granddaughter and grandson are coming down for christmas eve and i've got uh, i have to switch over to taxes charging taxes on my hosting in that for midnight because i'm c collecting that in the new year and i oh, really some, yeah yeah i've reached the point where i have to collect the tax so which is fine oh uh, we we in vermont and in the states don't on service based things right now especially in vermont i don't have to collect taxes on service. okay for now well here it's a little bit tricky because uh, too because uh, provincial sales tax if for instance so if i build a website as a service i don't have to charge pst provincial sales tax here in british columbia but if i and if i include hosting in with that package that i've built them a website i don't have to charge pst but because the hosting that I'm throwing in involves email, anything that involves communication, like person, like use, someone will use it to communicate, you do charge PST. And it's really dicey here. I, I know one web, well, my friend's web hosting company, you can get advice from someone that says, no, you don't have to charge it. The problem is, is when the person who's auditing you says, no, you do have to charge it. And it's sort of open to interpretation. So I'm actually have to come up with just a solution. I, 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 the, the easiest solution is to just charge provincial sales tax on the hosting yeah. and, and, and just do it whether it's the type that needs it or not. Um, and so I've got to, I've got to figure that out, but, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a change because my business is growing up. So and then I got to sort out some, uh, I, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, um business account at our local credit union everything everything's all of our money's in together with the business which is fine because the because i'm just a sole proprietor so the government doesn't care they see all the money as my money and and that so i haven't incorporated um 
I probably would incorporate down the road once I have enough money to just let someone do it because I don't have time to figure it out. Uh, but um, we're gonna get, I'm going to get a business account uh, in the new year so that uh, and just have the money go into that and then I'll, we'll just transfer it to our personal account as, just to keep it separate. And that will allow me to receive checks in the name of the company instead of just having to be made out to me as well. So little... Make it sound professional. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, so I want to do that for a while. But then, you know, when you're in that stage, it's like, well, it's five bucks a month. So, and things are tight. So we'll just squeeze by and work our way around it. But yeah, and at some point, I have to figure out something to do for an accountant because I, I want, and actually, I have a friend that I made at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they moved away, but they're, I'm contacting them. They want to revive their website in the, um, in the new year. And uh, so I'm in touch with them. So I'm actually might uh, try to get into a uh, swapping an hour a month of, of each other's business for something like that. Um, just to, because uh, she just wants a static page and some information. And so that needs maintenance and that. So if I take care, I, I might be able to work out some kind of sw swap agreement with her. So anyways... Anywho, happy new year, everybody. Yeah, you too, Tim. I think it's good. I'm looking forward to the new year. I'm excited about it. I, for, I'm hoping that for me, it's a year of building on the foundation of a lot of things that have come together in the past, uh, in the past 12 months or 14 months since I've been solo for this as income. So, and it's been great hanging out with you guys this year and I, uh, I will have to concur with that one it's been um it's been nice to 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 meet you know via digitally uh mary and you and and chuck and john even though john wasn't here tonight no john is out doing new year's eve stuff well you know that's overrated that happens every year <laughs> it hasn't happened yet this year no, no, I still have a few more hours. Yeah. Anyways, well, Happy New Year, Vinny and Mary and Johan and and uh, and Chuck. I don't know if Chuck's still there, but if you're there, Chuck, Happy New Year. Anybody else is just lurking? All you lurkers. So uh, I will uh, talk to you in the new year um, on, uh, on Twitch. We'll talk about some of our plans for business, for ourselves, and uh, have a good kickoff to New Year. So, thanks everybody. Enjoy your Joomla sites, and God bless. <laughs>